Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Holy Mass at St. Gregory the Great. My name is Gregory Tobin, and I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Dan, assisted by Deacon Mike. Welcome aboard. Set sail with Mom's ministry and feel anchored in the troubled waters of the current culture. Dan Lawson, New York State licensed psychotherapist, will help us navigate with a Catholic compass. Register today. Please see the bulletin for details. Oktoberfest is just two weekends away. Come have a barrel of fun with us as we gather for German food and drinks, a pretzel wall, music, and dancing. Tickets can be purchased on our website or in the parish office. Please see the bulletin for important information on a 9-11 memorial service at St. Pius X, a town hall meeting for our parish family of parishes, great dinner auction sponsorships, and much more. The readings for today's liturgy are located at number 1262 in the gather book. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate this 23rd Sunday in ordinary time, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are love incarnate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to show us the way to salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are present when we gather in your name. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, graciously look upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt. But I will hold you responsible for his death. But if I warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, come, let us bow down, bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God and we the people, the people of his pasture, the flock of his hand. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on, that, on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bakhmut, Ukraine. Bakhmut is one of the oldest industrial cities in eastern Ukraine and known as the center of the salt industry. This 400-year-old city has been the primary focus of Russia's war effort since last spring and has gradually come under Russia and Wagner forces control. Considered one of the bloodiest conflicts of the war, today it is a charred ghost town. A Ukrainian novelist who served on the front lines of the war wrote a story in last month's Sunday New York Times entitled, I have spent five days in a ditch waiting for death. It was pure hell. Perhaps you read it. Given the task of protecting a combat position on the outskirts of the city, the article tells the human drama of the unit he commanded while in the trenches. Ten miles from the Russian front line, he and his unit were the sentry, the outlook for snipers, invading drones and enemy attacks. Five days he lay in a four-foot deep hole, 
a trench, wincing at explosions and the endless buzzing sound of drones while protecting his head from falling branches sheared by shellings. All around were the wounded, the wasted, and the pugnant sour smell of death. Often he had asked himself, do I really want to fight? Do I really want to die? Do I really want to give up everything? Yet somehow he knew the answer. How could he not pick up arms and fight? Or maybe not. The role of a sentry, a watchman, has been around from early times. For example, in ancient Israel, as harvest time drew near, landlords hired guards to protect their crops against thieves. They would even put up a stone tower for better view over the crops. Cities had walls with sentries and guard towers to protect the inhabitants from raiders. Now, if you've ever been to biblical Jerusalem, the Tower of David, also known as the Jerusalem Citadel, is an ancient citadel located near the Jaffa Gate, the western entrance to the old city. Originally built in the second century BC during King Herod's time, its purpose was to strategically strengthen the city's defenses, protect pilgrims from the menace of highway robbers, and watch for foreign invaders. Sentries were posted in the tower with one charge, to be on watch. The life of a sentry. This is where we meet the prophet Ezekiel in our first reading. Recall Ezekiel spent his life in exile in Babylonia after the destruction of the first temple some 600 years before Christ. Ezekiel describes his call from God as a sentry, a watchman for the house of Israel. His business was the spiritual well-being of his community. His role was to make very clear to the Jewish people the seriousness of failing to turn from evil and to pursue the way of righteousness. And get this, God warned Ezekiel that if he did not faithfully blow his trumpet and warn of the punishment for not following God, Ezekiel himself would be held accountable for the blood of those who died in their sins. Like the Ukrainian sentinel, Ezekiel too did not want blood on his hands, so he steadfastly followed God's instructions. Ezekiel's depiction of the prophet as a watchman is a prelude to today's gospel story, which speaks of community building and social discourse. In Matthew, Jesus insists that it is not enough for Christians to mind their own business. Called to be faithful witnesses, the mutual concern of the church community is everyone's business. Jesus instructs his followers how to help each other stay on the right track. Each disciple is to be a watch person, per se, and be responsible for the spiritual well-being of the entire community. And what are we to be on watch for? Matthew is concerned about the nature of destructive sins as the entire community suffers from the sinfulness of one of its members. So what are some examples of serious social sins that can be destructive to the community? Cheating, dishonesty, dishonesty, and failure to fulfill your business obligations. The marginalization of groups such as ignoring women's voices and discounting the elderly. Social media hate is a sin that our children and grandchildren are being raised in, conditioned to, and experienced daily. Other sins of destructive nature of the church's fellowship may be economic in nature. In Corinthians, Paul speaks about members of the church suing one another in civil court rather than arbitrary such cases within the community. In Thessalonians, Paul speaks about the sin of people freeloading and who refuse to work but are happy to eat what other people buy. Now, does this not sound like some current events? such as the collapse of public order on our American streets? 
all our roots of evil that cause destruction and bind us to this earth. Because of our human condition, sin will always be present. So like Ezekiel, we are called to be a watch person of others in our community. And how are we to respond when we observe destructive behaviors? Ignore it? Turn the other cheek? No, I know. Perhaps let it just fester and eat away at us. Or we can even excommunicate them. No, not really. As we embrace our baptismal roles of priest, prophet, and king, the spirit of today's gospel encourages us to unite with others and deal with matters in the most charitable of ways. We're to find the true presence in Christ and others versus finding fault with one's blind spots. Indeed, when we hold accountable and bind one another, we then stand up against destructive sins and release the bonds of guilt, anger, and bitterness. When we, do, when we do these things, we align ourselves with God's value of forgiveness, justice, and participate in the work of reconciliation that God so desires. Same too when we loose things on earth for the good of our community, forgiveness, grace, and compassion is extended. Both the Ukrainian novelist, Sentry, and Ezekiel chose the better path and took upon themselves the role of watchmen for their people, their community. Should this not be the same role we choose for our faith-based community? Let us together profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Mm -hmm. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's love and mercy, we bring our prayers and petitions before our Father in heaven. For all church leaders, may God's salvation reach to the ends of the earth through the ministry of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may they attend to the needs of the poor, homeless, and unemployed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all grandparents, as we celebrate Grandparents' Day this Sunday, may God grant them a long life, happiness, health, and may they be living signs of God's presence to their children and grandchildren. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from natural disasters, May they be assured of our continued prayers during their recovery efforts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all students, teachers, staff, and administrators as they begin a new school year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our parish community, may we receive the grace this week to show charity and seek reconciliation with those who have offended us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, whom we pray for in a special way, the Sendlak family, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Maria LaRusso, Gary Reinhardt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we approach the anniversary of 9-11, we pray for all those who defend our nation, all of our first responders, and all those who serve those in need. We pray on Thanksgiving. We ask for that you, Lord, keep them safe and bless them. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we ask you to hear these prayers, those we voice out loud, and the many more that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Hear and answer them in accordance with your most holy will. And we ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, gifts, the gifts will be brought forward by Kathy Dreschel and Don Dreschel.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that we offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Florence, Prasagonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holding of venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holding of venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In a humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest and sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ to place a refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ the Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Roll him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the, power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's greatest gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just want to let everybody know that today our Boy Scouts are selling, having their popcorn sale in the front vestibule. Um, <laughs> getting in the high sign from the back there. So we know that 70% of the proceeds actually stay right here with our troop, and it goes to help all of the Boy Scouts and the, all the wonderful work that they do and really their formation of our, of our young people. So we thank the Boy Scouts for their hard work, and we thank you all for your support. Um, they do take cash, credit cards, so go and get some popcorn. It's wonderful and delicious. And as always, we hope that all of you have a wonderful and a blessed week. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer for renewal. In every age, O God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. At this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the humbly pray. pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.